What's up you guys, Avery here, want to bring you guys a quick discussion video talking about the week one syndrome for this format. Um, I just saw that Robbie had done a market watch for Duelist Saga and I kind of just wanted to go over basically what week one syndrome is uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! and kind of talk about uh, why it's such a big deal. And uh, I also want to thank you guys as well for the amazing support on my Zodiac deck profile. Uh, a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, and if you're new to the channel, I thank you for subscribing. And without further ado, let's go ahead and just get right into this video. So, uh, week one syndrome is, in my opinion, very strong for this format right now, just because of the fact that we have Duelist Saga dropping with a lot of good reprints. We also have a lot of regionals going on this weekend. I haven't sold my Zodiac stuff just because that I have a regional tomorrow. Also, if you guys are going to be at the Kissimmee, Orlando, Florida Regional, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below because I'll be there. We can hang out and trade and whatever. Um, but yeah, so week one syndrome is always something that you have to look out for just because of the fact that, you know, prices are all over the place. Prices are skyrocketing, um, especially with a new set such as Dual Saga that has a lot of good reprints and everyone's trying to, you know, get a little piece of the pie of every single card in the set. I mean, you're going to see stuff right on release like Armitage the Chaos Phantom at 2 to $3, um, Battle Faders 1 to $2, Blacklist Soldiers $6. Of course, these prices go up and down depending on how many more you're able to get into the market. Um, but is this really something that should always be considered? Um, what I mean by that is... Should you always keep in mind week one syndrome when trying to buy and sell cards? Uh, not really, but also yes, just because of the fact that week one syndrome can have a lasting effect on the format, and you also have to look ahead into the future. What this means is that week one syndrome just kind of shows what everybody's thinking about um, at the for the uh, current format, but then of course things could change as we get new sets coming out and all that fun stuff. So, for example, me right now, I would not invest in anything zoo related. If I was trying to play competitive, I would invest in things such as paleo over time. Uh, you don't want to invest in things for a new deck, especially in week one syndrome, because the prices are going to be insane. However, if you see something that is fairly cheap and in your price range that you're able to pick up for the deck that you want to play, then by all means pick it up because it could potentially go up, especially if it's uh, like a tier one deck or something like that. If it's something like Chamber, it's obviously you know not going to go up at all. Um, on top of that, um, investing in just new sets such as Duelist Saga, uh, you can potentially make your money back because there is a lot of good reprints. However, this is something that if you wanted to do, you would want to do now instead of kind of doing labor down the road because then prices are more likely going to drop because of all these reprints. So this has just been a quick, um, I guess, two cents of mine thinking about, you know, how you should invest for this new format. Uh, what's the best way to invest, the best way to get your money's worth. Uh, and quite honestly, I would just invest a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time, unless you're going to be playing like, you know, a non-meta deck where you can just buy everything at once and the prices won't really fluctuate all too bad. If you're playing a meta deck like something like Zoo, then, you know, you might want to pick up stuff over time unless you really need it so that you can be able to kind of get things more on the cheap, cheap. Um, so other than that, I just wanted to put out a quick video for you guys, just kind of giving my thoughts about uh, the best way to invest into this new format, especially if you're trying to be competitive, just because of the fact that, you know, I do uh, pretty much buy and sell the best deck. I'll buy whatever I think is the best, and then I'll sell that deck and then turn right around and get the next best deck, just because to me, investing in product is pointless now just because that we don't have an end date on the ban list. Um, on top of that too, I haven't posted in five days, so I wanted to give you guys a fairly nice upload that you guys can enjoy while I'm away at regionals. On top of that too, I've been so busy with school and I've been playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts, you guys. Uh, like 14 hours into Kingdom Hearts 1 on easy mode and it's still hard as hell. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this little short investment idea video. If you guys have any other ideas about how you would invest into uh, cards going into a new format, let me know in the comments below. 
Um, is there anything different that you do? Do you like buy a case of the latest set, then turn around and try and make a profit off that set? Do you like just buy a play set of everything and keep it for yourself? Let me know what you guys do in the comments below. It'd be interesting to see what y'all do. Thank you guys for watching as always, and subscribe if you've not already.